in true Borderlands fashion, you have more loot that you can carry, bullet sponge enemies, and a funny over-the-top sarcastic story. Plus, what I think the most important aspect ever, offline true LAN. That's right, local area network in a 2021 game. The dragon attacks and... Critical hit! Tina, uh, you can't start your campaign with a boss fight. Players can't win. If you love Borderlands, this is an easy choice. However, if you were never a fan of the series, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep will probably make you dislike Borderlands even more. Why do I say this? Because the game is a drag. Right, maybe not in that sense, but like in the actual word drag. They're just dragging along Borderlands. They're just adding more content to Borderlands. While not really polishing or improving on the recipe, they're just adding something more. Still, at least it's at a very reasonable price. You can pick it up for 10 bucks and it's, well, for that price alone, it's, I guess it's worth to try. Again, I kind of emphasize that this feels like it's for Borderlands people. I find myself in the middle. And to that extent, I also play this, unfortunately, in single player which <laughs> didn't really improve my experience. Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, I think that it should definitely be played in co-op. It's the best way to experience this. The non-stop shooting of absolutely everything around you becomes at moments when you are alone a bit tedious and too much. In a party of four people, if you have four friends, I mean, this can really be a blast turning the entire experience upside down in a good way. Even if you have one single friend, like, please take it from me. Just play this in co-op. It's worth it. Also in true Borderlands fashion, you can choose to kill absolutely everything you see on screen, leveling up and also making the game last longer to what might be probably more than 10 hours, or at least that's what I read on the internet. Or you can play it like me, choosing to avoid certain areas and bad guys and go straight for the main quest. That's how I played it. And I end up finishing the game to roughly around 10 hours, dying Whoa, quite a few times. And for the dying part, I guess I blame the game, unfortunately, for most of it. I mean, seriously, during boss fights, there's just way too much happening on screen at the same time. That's exactly the type of moment when I wished I had a friend to help along. There's just too much shooting for one person. And I felt like the weapons mechanic aren't helping. I did play Borderlands 1, 2, the sequel. The third one when it came out did not finish the third one. And I am sure 100% that the identical weapon mechanics used in Borderlands 3 was also used here. However, it's been months and I've been playing Call of Duty Warzone and a couple of other shooters ever since. And let me tell you, why it may not be a surprise the weapons don't feel like call of duty no they have a specific borderlands feeling to them and for me i'm just not a fan of it also not helping is the fact that you get so many new weapons almost at every 10 minutes no joke if you are a borderlands fan this is exactly what you came here for but like what happens if you're not? I love looting and shooting and I love just hack and slash RPGs, for example, like Warhammer Chaos Bane, right? Lots of items, lots of looting. But as usual, Borderlands, I think, kind of takes it a bit too far to the extreme. I ended up trading uh, weapons that they were good or just leaving them on the ground by accident just because I had so much in inventory and some of them just look weird. <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe that's just my problem. Other than this, from now on, I have absolutely nothing but good things to say about Tiny Tina's adventure. And it starts with the story. 
while it's not that complicated, there is some hefty story, just like in any other Borderlands game. Tiny Tina initiates with a few already known characters from the franchise a tabletop role-playing game. The entire thing is one huge role-playing game, except they are the ones who are playing it and you take on the role of the person who's doing the shooting. Tina, why don't you start over? <clears throat> Welcome, fine ladies, to your first session of the most coolest game in the world, Bunkers and Badasses! As your bunker master, I will be spinning today's tale of fantasy and... Wait, why the hell are we playing this kid's game? Oh, you know, maybe because... Shut the hell up, Morty! Tina? She's right, though. Shut up. All game is fair, and Tina has the ability to change at her own will NPCs, make locations come out out of thin air, and even change quests, because that's how she feels like it. All while doing some serious stand-up comedy. I mean, honestly, it's fun to hear these guys talk, banter one another. Anything from pop culture jokes to just straight up insulting each other. I understand that for me it was funny, but this type of humor might not be for everyone. Some of you will enjoy it, some of you won't. However, the piece of resistance for me, like the most important thing ever, is the one that I didn't get to experience. But I know it's the most important thing. Offline co-op. Local co-op. Actual land. That's right. A looter shooter in 2021 that supports offline LAN. I mean, Gearbox knows what they're doing. These people are great. For this thing alone, this game is worth every single penny. We need more co-op shooters. And to think that these people gave us one that also supports LAN. I mean, just bravo. Here's the thing. And this is why I love these people so much. This is why I appreciate companies like these. And there's not a lot of them out there. While other spend a ton of money on protecting their game, I guess. Paying for De Nuvo and all sorts of anti-piracy software. Making most of the times the game performance even worse. These people, <laughs> these fantastic folks, invest money to make the game better. Nothing but love for a company that does this. Borderlands, in, in, in my mind, and anything sort of Borderlands related like this video game, is worth respecting. Th this series has to stay alive just the way it is right now because I think that they're doing something quite right. They give us LAN and they give us co-op. This has to be kept alive. The value is huge. I belong to that category and me and just a few of my friends, we still like to get together in the same room with some pizza and drinks and game for a couple of hours. Land for us is still important and you can find it here. I love it. I guess you kind of need to figure out for yourself if you want to buy this or not, if you want to play it or not, because it's kind of hard for me to definitely recommend it. Mainly because this is a niche. Borderlands has always been a niche. First off, the way the game looks, the graphics, the humor, and maybe way too many weapons that you get. Borderlands has been not always fun for everyone. From that perspective, in the end, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep is not for everybody. As far as I'm concerned, I'm glad I picked it up. I'm glad I played it, and who knows, maybe I'll just get some co-op if I can just convince my friends to buy it as well. It's so inexpensive, it's just sometimes we don't have time for it. Maybe for Christmas, who knows. My name is Rakashu. If you play this, if you play Borderlands, if you love Borderlands or not, let's talk about it in the comment section. If you don't know if you want to buy this and you have questions, maybe I missed something, ask me and I will answer it. Until next time, see ya. Once upon a time. The Vault Hunters play the game. The world is on the brink of going boom boom. This is our most desperate hour. Unless we make a stand here and now, we're gonna die. Now.